Love this podcast? Support this show through the Acast supporter feature. It's up to you how much you give, and there's no regular commitment. Just click the link in the show description to support now. This week's episode of Thinking Outside the Boombox is brought to you by Revolution Beauty. Revolution Beauty is affordable and accessible makeup for all. Since day one, Revolution has been challenging beauty norms and championing diversity. All products are 100% cruelty-free and designed based on consumer feedback, so Revolution has something for every skin type and any occasion. I'm teaming up with Revolution Beauty to give you 20% off your next purchase by using the code PODGO20. That's code P-O-D-G-O-20 at revolutionbeauty.us. Check out the link uh, in the show description and join the revolution today. Let's start the show. Yo, what's up, listeners? Welcome to another episode of Thinking Outside the Boombox, your number one source for hip-hop and R&B news. My name is Ahmad, and I'm your host. It is Sunday, May 30th. Uh, I hope everyone is getting ready to have um, a nice Memorial Day uh, holiday. I hope you've already been having a good Memorial Day weekend. Welcome to Thinking Outside the Boombox. I'm excited to have you here. I am excited to be here. Um... I'm super excited because in the Dig Deeper segment this week, I get to start another uh, edition of the Meat series. Um, As you may know in the past, I started the Meat series to kind of start doing artist spotlights of different labels. So I started with Dreamville, uh, J. Cole's label. I did uh, a spotlight of every artist on that label except for Cole. Um, that was a couple years ago, and then last year, uh, around the same time, actually, I did a meet series for TDE, Top Dog Entertainment, the label that Kendrick is signed to. Um, so I did a spotlight of all of the artists on that label besides Kendrick. Um, so it's that time again. In the Dig Deeper segment, I'm going to be doing uh, an artist spotlight on Party Next Door, a member of October's very own, or OVO Sound the label that Drake co-founded. So yeah, I'm excited to get that series started. But before all of that, I'm going to give you a song of the week um, and the press play segment uh, where I talk to you about, you know, things and things that have been released or things that have happened in the hip hop and R&B genre since the last episode. Um, Everything I talk about in those segments and in the episode in general can be found in the podcast newsletter. So there you can find links to any song I mentioned, any music video I mentioned, any albums I mentioned. You'll find links to all of that in the podcast newsletter. If you go to thinkingoutsidetheboombox.com on the homepage, Uh, There's a place where you can put in your email address that'll get you on the mailing list and then every time there's an episode you'll get the newsletter in your inbox or if you don't want to be on the mailing list just uh, hit the newsletter tab on thinkingoutsidetheboombox.com and all the newsletters are there. So without any further ado let's jump into the song of the week. So the song of the week for this week um, is a song that I really haven't been able to stop listening to and it's called I Like That. Uh, it's T-Pain's new single, and it features Kalani. Now, the, the thing that is great about this song is that it samples T-Pain's probably most popular song, uh, Buy You a Drink. So it samples the main melody of that, but then um, it kind of immediately uh, blossoms off into a completely different melody, uh cadence from t-pain and chorus and then kalani comes in and adds an incredible verse it's just a really nice way to like build upon the nostalgia of buy you a drink because everybody loves that song and it kind of you know takes you back to a specific time and maybe even a specific memory when you hear that song and for him to take that and then make another song which is also really dope off of it um 
It's incredible. T-Pain is is a great artist. I'm glad that he's finding success still in music. Um, And I'm excited to see if this is going to lead to a new album. So the song of the week for this week is uh, I Like That by T-Pain featuring Kalani. So it's now time to jump into the press play segment. So for the press play segment, let's jump right into the things that you should check out this episode. First up, um, Silk Sonic, which is the group that Bruno Mars and Anderson Pac formed. Um, as you know, they released their first single called uh, Leave the Door Open, and they performed this at the iHeart uh, Radio Music Awards in Every time I see them perform this song, the performances get better and better. They clearly have incredible chemistry together, like musically, but also their personalities just like mesh really well. So both of them were just having fun on stage, like with the fans and with each other. It was just really a very entertaining performance. So definitely check that out. J. Cole dropped off two music videos from his album the off season which he's dropped a couple weeks ago uh one for applying pressure and one for amari and honestly i think he's two for two on the visuals it's just utilizing really cool camera shots and just the things that he's doing in the video is just really cool he's got great style in the video um he's having fun it's just it's really cool and um I'm glad that Cole is, you know, keeping the hype up for the album. Um, He's released pretty much a video every week since the album dropped. Um, So I was glad to see that. So check out those two music videos. Um, And finally, in the things you should check out, Earth Gang. I'm pretty sure they're... So they have an album called Ghetto Gospel that's going to be coming out probably this year. And so they've been doing... Or sorry, not Ghetto Gospel, Ghetto Gods. Um... I was <laughs> been listening to Rod Wave lately, and that's one of his projects. That's why it's in my head. Um, ghetto Gods, and so they've been doing these like Ghetto God Friday things where they drop a new song. So one of those was the re- so last episode I talked about their Lemon Pepper freestyle over Drake's Lemon Pepper freestyle. Um, and this week they had a song called Aretha, which samples Aretha Franklin. So it's a soulful beat, and then both of them are just going in, and they kill it and they also dropped a music video for that which is also dope so um look out for earth gang i'm I'm expecting them to impress with this one i I feel like mirrorland was a letdown for the most part um with fans expectations but i think with this ghetto gods project they could uh they could re you know they could uh kind of fix that they could start over again reinvigorate themselves and their um community so I'm, i'm excited about that um Let's jump into the rumor mill and the announcements. There were a lot of them this week. I already mentioned that Earth Gang is dropping their sophomore album, Ghetto Gods, this year. Um, Ab Soul announced his first album uh, since 2016 is coming soon. Who knows how soon that is, but I mentioned in the most anticipated albums episode to start the year that expect multiple TDE artists to drop. And, you know, it's almost June... I still, even though we haven't gotten any official albums yet, I would expect that Isaiah drops this year. Um, I still think Kendrick's drop, Kendrick's dropping this year, and you know maybe Absol drops close to the end of the year. Um, I still expect three TDE artists to drop projects. So, uh, ASAP Rocky, his album, his next album, All Smiles, he says is about ninety percent done. So it it is quite possible that we get that album this year. Um, Logic is dropping a memoir. It's called This Bright Future. Um, so if you're into like hip hop artists, memoirs and um, autobiographies, stuff like that, um, his will be out September 7th and you can find the link in the podcast newsletter. Um, in the Bronx, they are building the Universal Hip Hop Museum, and they broke ground on that the other day. Nas, L. Cool J, Fat Joe, and a bunch more people, I think Grandmaster Flash, were all there for the groundbreaking. Um, this is dope. Next time I'm in New York, um, once this is up, I would definitely be checking that out. It seems right up my alley, um, so shout out to that. Um, Bow Wow and Soldier Boy will be hosting a versus battle You know, with Swiss Beats and Timbaland. Um, this should be interesting. I expect Bow Wow to beat Soldier Boy. 
Um, the fact that they they both have to find 20 songs to compete in this, I think Bow Wow has a, a better chance than Soldier Boy does. Um, but this is just interesting because Bow Wow and Soldier Boy beefed for so long. Like back in like 2008, they were beefing about who had more money. They challenged each other to Lamborghini races. They dropped diss tracks on each other. It was it was a wild time. And then by 2016, they were like, "Nah, we cool, we friends." Um, so this is going to be a hilarious versus, um, no matter what. They haven't dropped the date yet, but I'll keep you posted. Uh, Bruno Mars has become the first artist to have five diamond singles. Uh, so a diamond single is 10 million uh, units sold. Um, and so his songs, Just the Way You Are, and uh, Just the Way You Are has sold 12 million. Uptown Funk and When I Was Your Man have both sold 11 million and his songs That's What I Like and Grenade have both sold 10 million. So the first artist since they started tracking certifications or giving out certifications to have five diamond singles. That's wild. Shout out to Bruno for that. Uh, Bruno also in other news just sold part of his nearly 250 song catalog to uh, Warner Chappelle or it might be Warner Chapel. I'm not really sure. Um, but he sold off some of his catalog um, that kind of really shows the trust that he has in that label to, you know, handle his masters in the right way. So that's a very interesting deal. I'm excited to hear more about that or interested to hear more about that. Uh, J. Cole got a number one album with the offseason, making it the biggest rap release of the year thus far. It just missed the the title of the best selling album period this year. I think it was like... Um, maybe five to six thousand behind taylor swift's uh her re-release of that fearless album i think it was called um but what he did do is become the first rapper to have six consecutive number one albums um beyonce has done that um in the r&b field but j cole has now become the first rapper to have six albums in a row go number one so i mean it's it's undeniable that J. Cole is one of the greats at this point. Like, you really just can't say anything else about that anymore. Um, Nicki Minaj, with her Be Me Up Scotty re-release on streaming services, sold 80,000 units for a project that's basically 12 years old. That is incredible. Like, it was a mixtape from 12 years ago. She added three songs and put it on streaming and sold 80,000 units. That's incredible. So shout out to Nicki for that. Um, and finally, uh, almost nine years after the song was released, Earl Sweatshirt has earned his first gold record for his song, Chum. Um, I feel like that was probably on his project. I don't like shit. I don't go outside or something like that. I think that was the name of it. Um, but yeah, he, he got a gold record for it. So shout out to that that consistency and that persistence for sure of the fans listening to the song to finally get him a gold plaque let's move on to the upcoming and recently released albums uh just this past friday dmx's posthumous album exodus executive produced by swiss beats was released um i like the album there are some things i don't like about the album like swiss beats talking on almost every song uh some of the production i was not a fan of um, but I think when DMX really sits down and, you know, reflects on his life in this album, it's when it's at its best. Um, so are there, there are definitely some songs, um, and even some features that you definitely should check out. Um, this, uh, this upcoming month in June, Isaiah Rashad's album, The House is Burning is set to be released. Uh, June 4th, Lil Baby and Lil Durk's collab album, Voice of the Heroes, will be dropping. Peter Rosenberg's debut album, Real Late, will be dropping. June 11th, Migos finally revealed the release date of their Culture 3 album. Um, And then June 18th, Gucci Mane is dropping off his album, Ice Daddy. Um, So that is it for the Press Play segment this week. Like I said, everything I talk about will be in the podcast newsletter, so go get that. And without any further ado, uh, let's take a short break and come right back with the Dig Deeper segment. Welcome back to Thinking Outside the Boombox. It is now time for the Dig Deeper segment. 
As I mentioned um, in the top of the hour, the third installment of the Thinking Outside the Boombox Meet series um, will be kicking off this week. Um, It'll last for five weeks, and I'm going to be taking a look at the October's very own record label, more commonly known as OVO Sound. Um, For the next few weeks, I'll be shining a spotlight on all the artists of OVO besides Drake. Um, I'll explore the history of their music career, talk about their most popular songs, discuss what, what they might have coming next. You know, there's always some some artists on these big labels I'd either forgotten about or artists I didn't know were signed there. It's easy to lose track um, with these labels that are centered around a huge artist. Like I mentioned, the first two installments of the Meat series explored Dreamville, led by Cole, TDE, where Kendrick gets most of the fan attention. And with Drake leading OVO Sound, it's easy to see how the same could be true, that some of these artists kind of get lost in the shuffle. But I do think that Drake does a good job of... You know, making sure that when his artists are doing something, he's promoting it and that he's, you know, even doing more than that, being a part of their their projects musically. Um, I think he does a good job of that. So I wanted to feature all of those artists. And then who knows, maybe by the time this series is done, Drake will drop Certified Lover Boy and we can transition right into talking about that. Um, But this week's episode is about Party Next Door. Um, Party Next Door, or his real name, Jerron Brathwaite, is a 27-year-old singer, songwriter, rapper, producer from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Um, some history of, of his childhood, his parents played a lot of old-school R&B when he was growing up, like Jodeci, Black Street, Boys to Men, 112, and that was kind of a big influence and inspiration for him. Uh, When he was 18, he signed a publishing deal with Warner Brothers as a songwriter. He had been making uh, electronic R&B under his real name at this point. And then two years later in 2013, he signed a joint record deal with OVO and Warner. So outside of Drake, he was officially the first uh, signee to OVO Sound. Um, Party is easily one of my favorite artists on the label. His music interested me from the moment I heard it. What he does isn't necessarily unique. You know, there are lots of R&B artists that toe the line between singing and rapping, especially those who rely on autotune and vocal production as an instrument. But I think that how he does it is unique. You know, I like the way his voice sounds on the music he makes. He can certainly sing better than Drake can. His songwriting is usually impressive. And the way he weaves his Jamaican heritage and dance hall into his music and his later projects is fun and creative. Um... Party got things rolling pretty quickly Uh, after he signed the OVO. He released his self-titled mixtape in July of 2013. This mixtape got a decent amount of buzz with little promotion, but that promotion did come through the OVO blog and Drake, who tweeted about it. And he had already released Take Care at that point. So people were listening to what Drake had to say. At 28 minutes long... Uh, this mixtape was a good introduction to who Party was musically and what his point of view was. Um, Party wrote, sung, produced, and recorded the entire project himself. You can certainly hear those electronic influences from his earlier work in the production. I think stylistically, the first half of this mixtape is right in line with how R&B was moving in 2013, it's got more of a pop vibe to some of the arrangements as he blurs the line between R&B and melodic rap. But I think the second half is the best part of the mixtape. There's a four song run on there of Break From Toronto, To Be Honest, What's Good Slash Curious, and Over Here. That is completely incredible. Party loses some of the confidence from the first half and reveals a more vulnerable side of himself. The sample of Miguel's Girl with a Tattoo interlude. Um... And Break From Toronto is great and Party flows nicely over it. He got a Drake feature on the song over here. The production is fresh. There's little things in each beat that showcases that Party has a talent for production as well. You can also see why Drake was attracted to a Party Next Door OVO signing in the first place. There are notable similarities Uh, between Party's delivery and that of Drake and The Weeknd. He fits right in with Drake sonically. Um, This mixtape contains his earliest certified songs, uh, Break From Toronto, Went Platinum, What's Good, Went Gold, although they wouldn't be certified until six years after the mixtape was released. 
Uh, this mixtape also charted at number 34 on the top R&B and hip hop chart, which is impressive for a mixtape by an unknown artist. So after he dropped his debut mixtape, uh, he would do background vocals on Drake's Nothing Was The Same album in 2013. Uh, he did vocals on Own It and Come Through. He joined Drake on the Would You Like A Tour tour. Um, in July of 2014, he released his debut studio album, which was called Party Next Door 2 or P2. Uh, right off the bat, the production value of the vocals and the music seems like it's been upgraded. Like, who knows if maybe, you know, now that he got signed, he got that mixtape and that buzz, he got a little more money, he upgraded all the things he uses to do his work. But, like, uh, you can definitely hear that upgrade. Lyrically, he's he's not rapping or singing about anything unique. And his cover of Disclosure and Sam Smith's song Latch is not great uh, for his song Sex on the Beach. But his production and song arrangements continue to be the most impressive. There's the slow burn of the song SLS, which samples Share My World by Drew Hill. It's one of my favorites when it finally reaches that peak. His delivery on uh, FWU is unorthodox but appealing. He grabs another Drake feature for one of his most popular songs, Recognize, and arguably the best song on the album. The production is amazing. Uh, Party employs amigos and a young thug-like flow and shows off vocally. Uh, Drake delivers on another fire verse for his label mate. You know, Party is very confident on this album, and sonically, I think this album starts to lock in on what his sound is. And that's never been more true than on Thirsty. Like seven years later, and this is still my favorite Party Next Door song. Vocally, he sounds better than he ever had before. And that production with that Missy Elliott chingling sample is so damn good. It's the most passionately he's ever sung. Um, and it really works. This was also around the time when Weekend fans began to beef with Party because they thought he was biting the Weekend style. And there's songs on this project like Bout It. Uh, which do sound like the weekend style. And it's been hinted that they may have been, you know, subliminally dissing each other in songs, but nothing ever came of that. Regardless, Party did get a gold certification for his debut album, which is dope. In December of 2014, he released an EP called Colors. It was four songs and honestly seemed like a way for Party to release some Lucy's he'd been holding on to. Um, you know, the Drake uh, formula you know, was kind of in effect at this point. And so he was kind of following that where it's like, you know, if you want to keep him waiting, give him some losies to hold him over. Like, not that Drake was the first to do that, but, you know, in this camp, I'm sure that's, you know, that was what he was modeling himself after. Um, highlights from this EP is Girl from Oakland, which is rumored to be about Kalani. And then the Travis Scott assisted song, Just Know, where Party really plays around vocally, sounding just like The Weeknd over some similar sound and production. The whole EP is fire, though. It sounds very freeing. Um, in 2015, he produced three songs on, if you're reading This Is Too Late by Drake. Uh, that was Legend, Preach, and Wednesday Night Interlude, which is basically a solo track from Party on Drake's album. Similar to The Weeknd and Take Care Days, you can start to hear Party's influence on Drake's music like they seem to be real close collaborators. In 2016, this is when it really all took off. He got invited to a writer's workshop with Rihanna. He couldn't even believe he, that happened. He didn't know why he was there. And he ended up writing one of her biggest hits, Work. Uh, and earned his first number one song as a songwriter. Like initially the label didn't like the song, but Rihanna was like going around singing it all the time after he had kind of wrote it um, that she kind of like got it, got it done. She was like, nah, my family loves this song where we're doing this one. He also wrote Sex With Me, one of the bonus tracks from her anti-album. Um, in April of that year, 2016, he'd be featured on With You and provide background vocals for You With Me, which I think is really funny that those are the two songs he was on uh, from Drake's Views album. In August of that year, he released his second studio album, which was Party Next Door 3 or P3. I think this was easily Party's best album up to this point, And in my personal opinion, his best album, period, like now. Uh, I don't know if Homie knew he was the shit after finding success working with Rihanna or if he unlocked something new creatively. But sonically and creatively, this was his best piece of work. 
This is also the first time he didn't produce every track, letting OVO's house producers like 4D, Boy Wanda, and 1985 take the reins, although he did have his hand in a lot of the production. Uh, off the success of work, it seems Party embraced more of those dance hall vibes with songs like Only You and Not Nice and the dance hall samples throughout the album. Uh, it's clear the influence Party had on Drake's dance hall Caribbean phase, but it fits much more naturally on Party. Uh, Not Nice is so damn catchy. Party continues to impress with the production. The whistles that are fluttering in the background of You've Been Missed makes the song so much better. Brown Skin features some of the weirdest production we've heard from Party, uh, aided by 40. Um, as the beat is led by these off sync like bells or chimes and he sounds great over it there are so many bright spots in this album the album opener high hopes is a slow burn maybe too slow as it clocks in over seven minutes um, but it interpolates and possibly samples no diggity by black street and i think it's a nice interpretation of that song i think these are his strongest uh vocals on an album with songs like joy problems and selfless seeing him execute some new sounds of course drake came through again for the lead single come and see me proving their chemistry is still intact this album is still very much in party's range and it's not perfect but i think he improved on the model that he'd made for himself in past albums uh party would tour with jeremiah in 2016 he'd help produce and be featured on Drake's More Life playlist album. Uh, he was featured on Since Way Back. And then in July of 2017, he released the second part of his Colors EP called Colors 2. He added another four songs with Freakin' You being the clear standout uh, between Party's vocals and the young Thug-like vocals that sound better than Thug could ever make them. Party was really having fun on that song. This EP combined with the original, all eight of those songs were re-released on streaming services uh, earlier this year, actually, just called Colors. Um, a few months later, he released another EP called Seven Days, one that he recorded in just a week. Um, this EP utilized more popular styles of hip-hop and R&B production. It featured Halsey, Rick Ross... Um, and then he wouldn't release another album until 2020, but in that three-year hiatus, he would write and do some vocal engineering on Drake's Scorpion album uh, for Elevate and Ratchet Happy Birthday. He'd also do a number of features for artists like Summer Walker, DJ Khaled, Kanye, Future, and more, most notably co-writing the song Wild Thoughts with Rihanna and Bryson Tiller for DJ Khaled's Grateful album. So the man's name is out there and people know know who he is and what he can do. So in March of last year, 2020, he released his third studio album, uh, Party Mobile. This album made the honorable mentions on my end of year list last year. I think there are strong moments in this album, but collectively, it wasn't able to reach the heights of P3. From the looks of it, Party outsourced the production for this album because I didn't see his name in any of the production credits. And because of that, I feel like his signature sound is less present on this album. The production is a lot more pop-like. Uh, he doubles down on the dance hall island vibes he utilized on P3 with new songs like Touch Me, Eye On It, Trauma. Once again, Drake gives him another verse for Loyal with them aligning for an island Caribbean-like song together for one of the first official times that wasn't just Party doing background vocals or writing for the song. Um, and as the lead single, Loyal works, but it doesn't fit in thematically with the album. The project plays a will-they-won't-they they kind of game with infidelity a lot, um, and the album finale, Savage Anthem, eliminates any thought of loyalty. Um, it closes the album in its strongest vocally and from a writing perspective on the album. It's like the best written song and I think the strongest vocals. I've never heard Party quite this savage and he sounds really good embracing it. But it just directly contrasts songs like Loyal or the album opener, Nothing Less, which kind of where he's talking more about you know fruitful relationships and love and stuff like this and to end the album on something that just completely spits in the face of all of that is an interesting choice and it threatened the consistency and cohesion of the album uh i do really like what party does vocally on this album and his collaboration with rihanna uh believe it is very fun but it's hard not to think that this album was a step back creatively from p3 um it'll be interesting to see what comes next for him uh 
in October of 2020, he released Party Pack, which was an EP that contained seven songs that were either unreleased or non-officially released. You know, maybe he put them on a SoundCloud or something like that. Fans, including me, had been hoping for some of these songs to be put on streaming services for years so we could stop pulling up SoundCloud or YouTube every time we wanted to listen to them. Um, Party definitely seems to use his EPs to be a bit more creative. And I think similar to Drake's impressive run of stream of consciousness rap songs, Party excels when he does the same with R&B. There are songs from this project, Persian Rugs, West District, Things and Such, Don't Do It For You No More. There are true standouts, some of my favorite songs in his catalog, so I was very happy that he released these Lucy's. Um, So that's been Party Next Door's career so far. His reputation as a songwriter opens up a lot of opportunities for him. He's never lacking for a feature. He and Drake seem to have a great relationship. I would argue maybe the best of all of the artists on the label. Um, you know, he's been featured in some regard on Drake's last five albums, and I'm sure he'll have some part in Certified Lover Boy. And Drake always returns the favor. Drake has had a feature on all of Party's big projects so far. Um, Party is also pretty well regarded and highly anticipated as far as the fans go. Um, so I think whenever he's ready for a drop, people will listen to it. Um, I think. You know, he's probably the most famous and well-regarded in OVO as the artists go outside of Drake. Um, So he's definitely got a lot going for him. I'm excited to hear what he comes up with for his next album. Um, Because dude is interesting. You know, he, he knows how to write a song. The production is incredible when he has a hand in it. Um, and vocally, he just does unique things like the fact that Party Next Door can imitate Young Thug better than Young Thug can do himself is crazy. And like he's talented as a rapper and a singer. He really can just do it all. So I'm excited to see what else Party Next Door has in store. So that's Party Next Door. Um, if you hit up the podcast newsletter, I have links to all of the albums I mentioned so you can you know, hear the progression of his sound for yourself through his EPs, mixtapes, albums. So check out the podcast newsletter for that. Um, that's it for the Dig Deeper segment for this week. Uh, and that's it for the episode. Next week, uh, the Meet OVO series will be focusing on Roy Woods. Um, so I'm excited about that. I was I was into him for a little bit and then I kind of just fell off. He's a very unique artists very very interesting so i'm excited to talk about that and also excited to get back into listening to his music to um kind of figure out if i am still a fan um so i'll be talking about roy woods next week um wherever you listen to the podcast subscribe rate and review uh the podcast um tell your friends about it let them know that thinking outside the boombox is your number one source for hip-hop and r&b news i will see you next week peace (laughs) 